Hey everybody, Dave here, Hidden Freedom Investing. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and go through my February dividend portfolio update. Can't believe it's been another month already. It's been a crazy month, uh, February was. Um, you know, basically CV basically caused uh, the stock market to have a record loss in one week. It was pretty crazy. So we're gonna go ahead and do an update. We're gonna look at my portfolio. Uh, the dividends that got raised and we're gonna look at all the buys that I made and uh, in addition we're gonna look at some positions I added and a position that I cut as well so let's go ahead and dig it into the portfolio what a crazy month February was huh record decrease uh, just a week ago and you know everybody's looking for these things right now these n95s and uh i bought these about six years ago in bulk and you can buy them for pennies you know but uh right now you can probably came and get these things for uh you know 10 bucks 15 bucks so uh let's go ahead the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh run a couple of scripts to update the fractional shares and in addition to that we're also going to uh, run another script that uh just updates the uh, dividend information for the dividends that got increased. So um, let's go ahead and run the fractional share update script first. So now that the fractional share script is complete, let's go ahead and run the dividend information update script next so we can see all the dividend increases across the portfolio and update whatever information that uh, has changed as well. So let's go ahead and run that script now. Now that the scripts are finished, we can go ahead and dive into the portfolio. So right now there is 34 positions in this portfolio. So we take 35 minus that one up there. We have 34 positions total. And uh, you know, I added some new positions and I got rid of one and we'll go over those in a minute here. Right now there is $74,000 and $74,728 in here, providing an annual income of roughly $2,600 right now. So that's a pretty good increase from just two months ago when I started this portfolio. So, you know, I had a goal of 2000. It looks like we're already past that goal and uh, we'll try to get this thing up to uh, 3000 and then, you know, kind of reevaluate where we're at and if we want to go, you know, up to 4000 this year or not. So we'll, we'll see. Um, so it looks like we had a green day. Uh, the day of recording is March 4th, by the way. So, um, but all the dividend information is updated through the end of February. So I actually haven't added any new positions this week at all. Um, but we'll go ahead and look at those in a minute here. So right now it looks like we have, everything was green today, which is kind of amazing. Uh, it doesn't happen very often, but it's actually a very good update today. Um, let's go ahead and just sort these by the sector real quick here. And if we look at consumer staples here, you can see I have a lot of consumer staples and I've talked about this in the previous video. Um, now, one of the positions I just got rid of was Clorox and I just decided to cut that stock. It was up because of the virus, the CV, uh, and because of that, I went ahead and sold it. Um, it wasn't just because of that, but I have so much consumer staples and I just figured, you know, having 35 positions, I wanted to get rid of uh, one of the positions and I, there's some other stuff I'm going to probably cut as well. And we'll talk about that in a minute, but I did cut Clorox out of the portfolio. Um, that same day, um, I also added Verizon. Okay, because I wanted to split the consumer, uh, the, excuse me, I wanted to split the communication services up just a little bit. Um, I didn't want to have everything all into T, so I figured I would kind of probably maybe go into some Verizon there a little bit. You know, pays a good dividend. And I think that the, uh, let's take a look at the history here. 15 years of consecutive, so um, it looks like they survived one recession. Actually, you need to fix that, so... 
Um, we'll go ahead and just fix that real quick here. And let's go ahead and make that a 12. Okay, so uh, I added that position and you know, probably when I reach to a certain amount in T, I might just start putting into Verizon instead, but it also is gonna depend on where it is actually in the uh, chart as well, and where it's near the 52 week low or 52 week high. So uh, what other positions did I add? So I actually added a couple of more technologies here. So I added IBM and I also added Intel. So both of those got added to this portfolio the same day I dumped Clorox and the same day I added Verizon as well. Um, so IBM uh, right now pays 4.8% dividend yield and looks like Intel is paying about 2.25%. Uh, and part of that was just thinking is I wanna split that, uh, if I ever add you know Apple to this or whatever and have Microsoft in there, um, I just want to have a little bit more exposure to tech and those are just pretty, pretty solid companies, you know, in my opinion, you know, it's quite a, it's kind of questionable whether IBM is a, you know, a, a good company. I mean, they are a good company, but just nobody really knows what they really do anymore, but they are all solid companies. So, you know, if we look at the dividend, uh, history here, you know, 24 years. They're very close to being an aristocrat. So, and Intel's at six years. So we'll keep an eye on that one. We won't go too heavy into Intel or IBM, but I did want to split that out and not just go so heavy into Microsoft. So, you know, the five-year uh, dividend CAGR is 8.6% on IBM and 6.9% on Intel. So that's not bad. I mean, yes, it's less, less than what the Microsoft is at 10.45, but um, I have a little more uh, diversification in those tech stocks. So I feel a little bit more comfortable about that. And all those tech stocks are a little bit higher in beta. So we got you know IBM here at 1.28, Intel at 0.96, and Microsoft 1.1. So that will lower the overall beta for the whole portfolio. And right now, the uh, average across the whole portfolio is 0.80. Um, now, the average weighted is 0.76. So, in theoretically, uh, that should actually make this portfolio stand up pretty well in a recession or, you know, a decline as well. So, um, you know, that's what you get with tech. So, but that's, that's part of the, uh, part of the game. So at the same time, it uh, looks like all of these fractional shares have gotten reinvested. And if we scroll up, some of these were from last month, but uh, all the other ones have been updated. So if it shows these odd numbers here, that was the reinvestment happening. And my script updated that for me, so I didn't have to go in there and try to calculate it on my own. So let's go ahead and just go and uh, sort this by portfolio value again. So my largest position still is Johnson & Johnson at this point, and I keep adding to it if I can, if it's down. So um, at and is a little overweight right now, but uh, as I you know grow these out, then I'll kind of get these you know jockeying in the right positions um, when we start building these out. So just last week when we had that big decline, I had never seen in a long time, a lot of stocks in this 52 week off low, the 5% off low were lit up green. Um, so right now there's only one in there and that's, you know, uh, Wells Fargo. Uh, I'm actually pretty surprised that uh, JP Morgan is not in there either. It's, uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll have to look at that one and just make sure that JT, JP Morgan run is correct. But uh, I know JP Morgan and Wells Fargo has gotten beaten up quite heavily. So if we look at my financials, um, you know, JP Morgan, Travelers, Wells Fargo, and uh, Goldman Sachs in there. Um, so what other stuff am I looking at probably cutting out of this portfolio? Well, I'm probably gonna end up cutting out um, Altria at some point out of this portfolio. Um, now, it's not that I don't believe in Altria itself or the company or anything like that, but it's just, I wanna get out of the cigarette business and uh, you know I know they have some exposure to uh, vaping and, and all that, but I just wanted to get out of the cigarette uh, business and because I kind of see that as a declining sector uh, or declining you know, industry 
So eventually that will get cut and we get redistributed into some other stuff. Um, in addition to that, I could probably see myself cutting travelers possibly in the future as well. Um, and that one's not high on the list to cut, but uh, so Altria probably gone, travelers probably gone eventually as well. And that would bring my positions down to 32. And uh, we'll, we'll go from there at that point, but uh, you know, I can see myself adding another you know, utility or something like that in there at one point. So, so let's go ahead and look at what the actual dividend script updated here, kind of to see what the uh, what dividends actually were updated or increased, I should say. So, all these ones that are green here, this is a new field that I added here, uh, annual dividend manual. And basically what I do there is just take this number that's next to it and paste it in there, but then I put a conditional um, format on there. And if it goes down, or if this number is lower than the number next to it in the annual dividend dynamic, then it lights up green, uh, which means that the dividend was increased. Okay, now if it goes down, uh, if the dividend goes down, that means we're higher. So that'd be like 3.17 and it would turn red to let me know that they actually cut the dividend. So we don't want that. Um, I need to put probably another calculation in there. Uh, it's probably a manual calculation just to see whether or not they actually skipped the increase, not a cut necessarily, but whether they actually skipped an increase at all because that wouldn't actually flag at all. So uh, to, just to clear it, we'll just set it back to, uh, you know, the real number it should be, which is 3.16. So we had another increase here on Home Depot or Home Depot. We'll just clear that flag. We'll go ahead and clear the Walmart flag, which that one got increased as well, 2.16. And go ahead and clear this last flag, which was on uh, triple M, which is 3M, which has been on a, uh, you know, big decline recently with that yearly chart showing there's, you know, red. So let's go ahead and clear that one. That one got increased as well. So we cleared all those dividend, uh, increases. So we're look, let's go ahead and take a look at the allocation for this portfolio. So right now, this is what the allocation looks like for this portfolio. So information technology was a little underweight. So I kind of raised that up now to 9.4. So that's pretty good increase consumer staples has decreased a little bit I got rid of that you know Clorox and all that so um, healthcare has come up a little bit utilities is always gonna be high because I like utilities they are pretty solid they're pretty stable I do try to keep this very similar to what the S&P 500 is which is re represented right here uh, probably just update this every single uh, maybe six months or so by 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 a uh, yearly or so just to make sure I'm pretty close to those so consumer staples I am always gonna be higher because that's got some solid companies in it and uh, to me those are just like you know century companies that aren't going to go anywhere so other than maybe Altria but and financials I'm kind of raising up a little bit and that sector is getting pounded big time and you know now that the Fed cut the rates again you know 50 basis points um, you know financials uh, those have gotten killed JP Morgan and Wells Fargo I probably will pick up more shares of those as well so um, the income broken out right here so let's just go and take a look at the income the biggest income uh, sector is healthcare at $468 annual right now and the next biggest is consumer stables at 386 and the third biggest there being uh, communication services which is that Verizon and AT. so um, that is the income by sector so let's go ahead and go on to the next thing so let's go ahead and move on to look at all the buys that I made this month or the month of February so here we're looking at one of my accounts in Schwab. Like I said uh, earlier in one of my other portfolio update videos, that dividend portfolio is actually across two different accounts. Now they have exactly the same positions other than realty income. And so right now what we're looking at is the actual retirement account. Okay, now this account is not as big as my standard taxable account, but uh, this account I do invest every single month into as well. So right now we're looking at all the buys and the sells that I made for the month of February. And right now you can see those Cloroxes that I sold that I told you I sold earlier. So we sold the uh, five shares plus the fractional. And you can also look at all the buys that I made for the month of February. Now I didn't do a lot of buys except for the last week. Uh, I went pretty hog wild and we'll look at the other account here in a second where you can 
kind of see where I went hog wild. So, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So I did invest $1,163 in this particular account. So let's go ahead and look at the taxable account next. So here we are, we are looking at the taxable account and we're looking at all the buys that I made and, and some of the sells, which only, like I said, I only sold that Clorox in this particular account as well. Uh, but I did make a lot of buys. So this is starting with February 5th and you can kind of see I bought some leg, I bought some tea, Walmart, you know, I bought uh, a bunch more tea there. You know, a lot of these are just ones and twos, um, depending on what's going on in the market. You know, I might buy something that's on sale that particular day. Um, it wasn't really until just last week when everything was really on sale, when the market's down 10% in a week, um, I really started ramping up my buys a lot and you can kind of see that here. Um, 24, 25, you, you see a lot more purchases in there. Still, you know, one shares, two shares at a time, not buying a lot at the same time. Um, we're gonna keep scrolling down here. You can see, you know, all the way up through that whole week when we have that big decline, uh, you know, that record breaking decline week, you can see, I just kept adding probably, I think I added to almost every position in this portfolio, except for like Chevron and Exxon Mobil. Maybe I just added one or two of those at a time. Um, I don't think I added very much of that if I did. I would have to see, I don't remember even buying it, but um, so $5,000 on that particular page. Let's go to the next page. So looking at this, we'll continue on the 27th and that was a big down day. So I went ahead and just kept buying and buying and buying a little bit more heavier in my buys as well. Um, and then you can add that IBM in there and added that Intel in there and uh, added some, there's the Intel there. And if we scroll down here, there's the Verizon that got added. And I, you know, I can see everything kind of ramping up a little bit more as the market really had that big humongous sell off. So, and we keep scrolling down to the last day there and the 28th of February and you know picking up more stuff here that was basically a huge discount on the whole week so um, and there's the sell of the Clorox and we'll continue on we have another page that's $8,900 on that page and then on this page continue on still to the 28th and we picked up some more stuff here and added another $470 so so for the month of February I added over 14,500 to this particular portfolio and you know yeah i did go hog wild because how often do you get a 10 percent decline and you know we're going to kind of talk about that in a minute here and you know talk about the losses that i had uh, paper losses anyway because you know i'm not immune to that just like anybody else not immune to that so uh i did add quite a bit of capital i put that capital to work and at the same time i still have about uh I just transferred some more money to this account. So there's about nine or $10,000 still waiting to be deployed in this account. And if the market drops, um, you know, another five or 10% or even, you know, 20% like that, I will move more money into there to invest as well. So um, right now I haven't actually made a buy in the last week because the market has come up. So I'm kind of waiting for it to either do a double bottom or I'm waiting for it to make a, you know, a lower low. So. So those are the buys and the sells that I made for the month of February. I added over $14,000, $14,500 to this particular portfolio. Um, now I could slow that down or I could speed it up, but all that's gonna depend on what happens in the market. If we make a double bottom, if we make a lower low, I will go ahead and deploy more cash. So um, at the low, I lost, on paper, over $25,000 in my 401k, my dividend portfolio, not to mention my trading account, I lost over $25,000 on paper, okay? I'm not immune to that, just like nobody else is immune to that, okay? So you have money at risk invested in the stocks, you are at risk of losing you know, money on paper, right? So I'm not immune to that, $25,000. I don't look at the, uh, you know, the P&L in this particular portfolio. Um, actually, the other day I looked at it just you know, kind of get an idea of what was going on. And there's some positions in there I'm down 22% on, some of the oil sector. Um, you know, 3M and some other stocks in there, I'm down like 14, 15% on. So um, I don't care about that. All I care about is that my dividends are increasing, okay? And uh, I also care about putting more money in at good purchases as well. Um, in addition to that, I did put about $30,000 to work 
inside my 401k, okay, is the market cap dropping 5% here, 5% there. I went ahead and moved like $7,500 in at a time until I got up to the $30,000 mark and I still have quite a bit of cash I could still deploy in that account. So if we go ahead and drop down and you know 20% or something like that, I will go ahead and put another, you know, 15% of that to work, all right? And you know, if we get all the way down to you know 30, 40, 50 percent, which I don't think is going to happen, um, not you know in the near future, I don't believe. Um, I will go ahead and just deploy all that cash in the 401k and some other cash I have laying around in a longer term, you know, money market, high yield savings account, and deploy that as well. I will take advantage of those. So you don't get them very often, and uh, you need to take advantage of those. Um, the only thing I would say is make sure that you are pacing yourself, okay? Because you know, I know a lot of people that ran out of money the very first day, you know, thing was down 4% or whatever, and they spent all their money on the first day. You know, you don't know how far that's going to go. Pace yourself, you know, have some more cash available in case things drop down, okay? Um, the market doesn't care whether or not you get paid in two weeks or not, right? So, you get paid in two weeks and the market comes all the way down and goes all the way back up in those two weeks, you missed out, right? So, if you spent all your money. So, Keep some dry powder on the side, um, have some dry powder available just for those declines. So uh, with that, I think this is done with this update. So let's go ahead and end it here. If you have any questions, uh, go ahead and leave a comment below. Really appreciate all my recent subscribers, all my old subscribers, all my subscribers mean everything to me. So um, it's been a great experience for me so far. So. Um, let's go ahead and end it and uh, please go ahead and like this video go ahead and subscribe and we'll see you in the next update thanks for watching